Armageddon. That was another uh, Vision Crew project that was um, a couple of years after uh, Dante's Peak. So Pat McClung had gotten the job as a visual effects supervisor. Once again, a great guy to work with because he understood miniatures so well. And, and he was, you know, really easy to work with because he could kind of like roll up his sleeves and talk the talk. And he hired Alan Fauché to do, to be the model shop supervisor. And he built his own, he built a kind of a, a in, in-house model shop. They subcontracted some work to some model uh, companies, but they most of the work they did in house. And um, but then there was a request or a need to do a very large scale shuttle, specifically for a couple of scenes. It was like a docking scene, and then there was like a runway scene where they wanted like uh, it to land on the runway or whatever, and they wanted to shoot it on the runway, so they wanted it to be in Florida down there, and and then ultimately. Uh, there was a shot on the asteroid or meteor or whatever it was in um, with the armadillo driving out of the thing. And so we needed a big one. They bid it out to a few of the kind of usual suspects that were bidding at the time. And we were, we really wanted the job. And I think everybody, if I remember correctly, everybody kind of bid within like five or $10,000 of each other or something like that on this model. And they didn't give us any information because it was all secret because Armageddon and Deep Impact were kind of like in this tug of war about secrecy and stuff like this. And so uh, they wouldn't show us the model. They'd just sort of say like, oh, you're going to build a space shuttle. And the truth is the space shuttle is a pretty simple shape. It's like a big tube with, a, with wings and stuff. It's pretty straightforward. That's not what the Armageddon shuttles look like. <laughs> They're much more like really swoopy and cool. Uh, but they didn't share that with us at the time. But anyway, we underbid everybody. We ultimately, I think that, if I remember correctly, the producer called at one point and said, like, look, you know, we'd love for you guys to do the show. Um, you got to do it for $100,000 less or something like that. And we were like, uh, okay, I guess we could do it for $100,000 less than everybody else says, you know, why not? So that's what we did. We always believed that we could do it faster, better, cheaper, or whatever we were put to the test on that one. So we started mounting a team, and this miniature is 35 feet long, and uh, it's got to sit on its own wheels, it's got to be able to roll, it's got to be able to steer. You have to be able to have a full hollow interior because we have to be able to drive an armadillo out of the landing bay that's inside of it, and it's got to perfectly match all these smaller ones that everyone's, you know, their model shops are building. So it was not nothing. And we'd never built anything that big before as a model. So we put together a big team and we actually brought in George Stevens to run that crew. And uh, because he had built the Titanic, he kind of knew how to do big shapes, you know. And uh, it was uh, it was crazy. We, we basically, if I remember correctly, we got a digital scan of the, sh because it had so many complicated shapes. We got a digital scan, uh, like sort of a cross section of the shape every 12 inches or something like that. And then we had laser cut or water jetted or something. I can't remember, maybe they were CNC routed. I don't remember what the hell we did, but some we sent it out and we had them make the bulkhead shapes for us that would match the design. And then basically put that on an armature, a big, huge steel armature that we built, which was all built on a giant rotisserie in the shop. So we had two big rotisseries, one on one and one on the other, they're on wheels. We built the frame on that and then we put all these wood bulkheads in. Then stuffed those with foam, yellow urethane foam, and then basically started sculpting the shape on top of that. So once we had that, then we had the shape in foam and wood and steel. And then we fiberglass that whole thing. So we put fiberglass over the entire thing a gel coat, etc., to kind of make it smooth and nice. And then the real work begins. And the thing was on a rotisserie, so we could roll it upside down and we could do, and we did, we had space shuttle tiles, like thermal uh, uh, thermal tiles on, on the thing that were just uh, Sentra. But if you know anything about the space shuttle, like those tiles are, uh, every, one, every single one is unique. Like they're all different shapes and sizes so that they fit perfectly together and stuff. And it, the, tiling the bottom of that shuttle was a huge pain. Uh, it took weeks to do. And then, you know, all the detail bits we were doing. And then meanwhile, working on these epic steel landing gear with real aircraft tires on them so that we could hold up all the weight that we were generating. This thing was huge. So 
we built it so the wings could come off, so we could take the wings on and off for transport, because it had to be able to transport on a truck. The tail fin, I believe, stayed on it, because it was low enough, and it took everything we had to kind of get that thing done. But I remember at one point, while we were building it, I suddenly had this idea, because our shop was, uh, Vision Crew was, was sort of long and thin, and um, we actually had cut a hole in uh, one of the bays specifically to build this model so that we'd have enough space. We, rearranged, we remodeled the whole space just for this show. And so we did that, and then it was a moment where I was like, wait a minute, are we gonna be able to get this thing out the door? <laughs> so I suddenly realized it might not make it out the door with on the rotisserie, and I went upstairs and got a plan of the building and sort of printed something out and kind of worked it out and was like okay i think we can get it out i think we'll be okay because my worst nightmare was that we were gonna have to like cut the thing in half or something just to get it out the door uh, it was a crazy crazy uh stressful day until we figured it out so we were right down to the wire uh building that thing um rolled it outside we're putting the final details on as the truck and the crane show up to pick it up and put it on the truck to take it to florida and to drive it there for the shoot which is what they did. So they went down, they shot it down there, and then they brought it back to us, and we were able to detail out the inside because we hadn't had a time to do that. That was so that the armadillo could drive out of the bay. And in the movie, and this is one of those movie magic things, but in the movie, if you look at the scenes where the where you know Bruce Willis and Ben Affleck and those guys are talking around the armadillo in the landing bay, there's a lot of space around them. But the ship was basically the armadillo was as big as it could be and the ship was as small as it could be and so in our version the armadillo barely fits inside i mean it's like a couple of inches on each side of that bay so a lot of cheating going on there to kind of make it work but uh but it really performed great and they ended up using it in more shots than they expected and then afterwards they took it on a promotional tour because it was like such a cool piece it somewhere was in like one of these you know back lot tour things for a long time so I don't know where it is now, but it held up all these years. It held up in the weather and everything else. It's crazy. We built that thing to last for sure. So it was a, that was a neat model to work on. And, you know, I think, I, I don't know if we made any money on it, but we didn't lose any money. So that's pretty good.